So if you've been on Twitter at any point, you would think that JavaScript is the greatest language ever and that everybody uses it. Everybody. Except for this guy. Thank you, Andy Wong. Why though? Backend has proven to be good with JavaScript. Well, Sergi, I don't know if I believe you. Let's find out, okay? Because as far as I can tell, every JavaScript library claims that it's blazingly fast. Blazingly fast testing. Blazingly fast spreadsheets. Blazing fast web sockets. But is it though? Is it actually blazing fast or even fast? Well, the only reasonable way to do this is to use another popular backend language, say Go, that has similar characteristics, garbage collection. And let's just see which one's faster. Blazingly faster. Well, what about Rust? I thought you loved Rust. I do. Maybe not as much for the back end, though. It's kind of, uh... Not fun. All right, so let's go over the experiment. There are several web sockets that will all be connected to a singular server. The sockets will inherit the event emitter interface, and with that, a function called push. Sockets will emit out a single message and can be pushed a single message. With Go, I use channels. Every message that the server gets, it will then emit out. What is listening is a chat program. If a user sends a message, bang join in a room name, it will be added to that room. This experiment involved 20 rooms that would be distributed among the spawned sockets. It produced the same order every single time. The messages sent will be an object that contains some information that should be JSON parsed, manipulated. And by manipulated, I mean I just add one to a property, which is always 68. Nice. And yes, the test client is written in Rust. The message then will be stringified and handed back to each client. The interface on the way back is, of course, going to be an array of messages that will go to each client one at a time. Now, I've written the program so that they are effectively identical. Since there are no channels in Node, I just simply used event emitters and then just a function to push it back through. Now, would it have been more efficient for me to have the same function in Go that I can just push one message through? It could have been, but I felt like it was kind of moot for this server. But each server will stringify the message message and then divvy it up among the sockets as opposed to JSON stringifying per socket. So I really did try to make this as fair as possible. And of course, you can go check out the code chat again from Twitch decided on the name, which I did vote for socket to me, baby. Suck it to me, baby. Instead, you guys chose Tyrone Biggins, Dave Chappelle's lovely character. Is this a five o'clock free crack giveaway? <laughs> you degenerates. Either way, links in the description. You can go check out the code. Validate that I didn't, you know, make anything unfair. So let's briefly go over the test client because I want to make sure that you understand the experiment. That way the numbers make more sense. Effectively, every 100 milliseconds, I will emit a batch of messages. The batch of messages will be in the following format. It'll have a timestamp, which is the current one we grabbed, a small stringified string message, and of course that number in which we increment by one on the server. Nice. That way every socket has a small amount of time it's actually sending messages and a large amount of time it's actually waiting to receive messages. This also allows for a very even pace of messages coming through. That is because I always make sure that I'm sleeping only 100 milliseconds max between each set of messages being sent. And if at any point I have exceeded the amount of time it takes for me to send those messages versus my sleep cycle, I will let myself know. And guess what? It never happened once, so we're good to go. Then, of course, each socket will wait for its message that it sent to come back to itself and then measure the difference in time and print it out in a nice CSV-friendly format in which I can use Python or Google Sheets to do a little bit of analysis. Using, of course, Python, we can do a basic breakdown of the statistics. You'll see that this is 500 connections made to the server for both TypeScript and Go. The top numbers, of course, are TypeScript. The bottom numbers are Go. You'll see that the mean is significantly different and in favor of Go. I did not run any Man Whitney test to tell you if this is actually technically different, but a simple looking at the numbers should make it fairly obvious, even in the 75th percentile, that there is a large difference between the two. This 20 millisecond response time difference. Doing the exact same thing except a thousand clients on TypeScript and a thousand clients on Go, you'll see that the mean is vastly different. The mean did shift upwards by 10 milliseconds on Go, about 10x on TypeScript. The standard deviation is huge. The mean is about two seconds required response time versus Go's 66 milliseconds. That means the median message wait period on a TypeScript server was 1.65 seconds versus on Go, 67 milliseconds. Now remember, this was the same server in Linode. I didn't even have two different servers running. I would actually take one up 
run the test, take it down, take the next one up, run the test. It is a huge difference and it only gets significantly worse, but I feel like looking at this data doesn't quite do it justice. Let's look at it with some graphs. So I took all the timings from each one of the servers and I actually reduced down the set, taking like the first hundred, averaging it, taking the second hundred, averaging it. So I could just look at a smaller set and plus it causes the noise to be just less, right? It just is a little bit smoother of a graph. So here's that exact same data that we are looking at with only 500 connections, except using Google Sheets. You can just see with your eyeballs that the red line being Go is significantly lower than the blue line being TypeScript. The Y axis represents microseconds taken. And of course the X axis is just simply the samples. In other words, they represent an average over say a hundred messages each data point. So here's the thousand connections. And as you can see, it's just like, it's a blowout. Go is just flatlined at the bottom, whereas TypeScript goes way up to the tippity top, almost six seconds at one point to dive all the way back down then back up. So variability just huge. And it gets even worse above a thousand. All right, so here is 1500 clients connected to that same server. At this point, you can see it is just a disaster. This means that TypeScript is going to die. I had troubles running the server longer than about three minutes because it kept exploding. Whereas Go just purred along. A slight increase in round trip time, but you know, nothing much to bat an eye at. And look at how efficient it is. TypeScript at this point was also consuming about double its memory and it was growing quickly. And of course, every time we added more clients, the TypeScript line just got steeper and it would live less long. Go just didn't really change that much. So you're probably saying, well, Prime, you probably were on like some multi-core server that really just disadvantaged TypeScript and made it so that Go, because it can be used on multiple cores, just it gave it such a significant advantage. False. It was on Linode's smallest instance, which is a single core, one gigabyte of RAM, $5 a month. Wow. So that means there was no advantage. If anything, it meant there's probably a slight disadvantage for Go, not being able to spread all of its green threads across multiple cores, instead having all of those different Go funks running on a single core, yet it just crushed. So you're probably asking me, is it actually better to write Go though? I would personally say that Go is actually a nicer experience than TypeScript. One big reason is that Go controls and runs its own tools. There's an expected format of code, which some of the formats I dislike, some I like, but I'm okay with that. All projects universally look the same. Second, they have their own tools, their own build system, their own way they get modules. There's not Yarn versus NPM versus this, that, and the other. And it can be executed effectively on any platform. So it has a lot of the similarities as Node, just what I would consider a better ecosystem. The code itself, I feel is better. Channels are definitely superior to anything that JavaScript has. Now, Go's also increasingly growing with the preferred choice. A lot of that's because it's really fast, not as fast as Rust, but it is really easy to write, like TypeScript easy to write. So you kind of really get the best of all worlds when using Go. Now, another critique you could say is that my server was too simple, that I was spending most of my time just making syscalls, sending messages out across the wire. And you're absolutely right. I do think it was too simple. That is why this video is a part one. Okay, we're gonna do multiple parts to this. You know what I didn't use in JavaScript? I did not use async await. I didn't want to disadvantage it at all. Hopefully you're pretty excited about this. I love comparing languages and seeing similar features. And ultimately, I think Go is an incredible choice. I think it's too often that people just reach for TypeScript because it's easy, it's what they're familiar with. But if you just take a little bit of time, I would even venture to say that Go is simpler and quicker to learn than TypeScript. And if you take that small amount of time, you can write efficient servers that are really easy to scale with a team, even a team that's dominantly comprised of juniors. So if you like this kind of format, if you wanna see more of this, okay? Hey, I'd just like to let you know that you you can make some very beautiful UIs. I, I, you know, hey, you know, compliment to you, okay? But you're a disaster on the server, so get up and get the hell out of here! Man, you're walking slow. Oh, that's your speed. Okay, standard speed. Yeah, no, trust me, I can see it. I can see it from here. Tell me what you think I should test and compare. I personally think we should probably throw in a database and use a little async handling with RxJS and just see the difference. Let me know if you think TypeScript will actually perform better once the server gets more complicated. Or do you think Go is just gonna win? Of course, all of this is built live on Twitch and discussed in the DGen Army's Discord.
okay? So I hope you look forward to part two and please say something down below. Tell me you're excited. Tell me you want to see, because if you don't tell me, I don't know. I stop doing things because people are just like, mm -mm. So if you don't hit the like button or you don't say something down below, if you don't give me the signals back, I assume you don't want to watch this. So talk to me. Tell me you like me. Tell me you want my body. Is this 5 o'clock free crack giveaway?